Hey guys, Susanna here. Um, we're doing another episode of Stitching with Suze. Um, and since I've been home with COVID, <laughs> um, I've had plenty of stitches done. The last time um, I did, what was the last one? The Hedgehog. Um, a little, little bit of show and tell, I'll show you this in a minute. But uh, I'll be working on this one today. We actually are going to do some stitching. But I finished this one yesterday. Isn't that gorgeous? I got this um, that, that I just put away. I got a, um, it's from a lady on Instagram, um, Whisk and Wheelbarrow. She used to be in the Dalesford Mill Market and now she's online store. Um, and this was extra piece that she gave me and I sort of unraveled it. And these sort of looked a bit like holly. Um, and I ironed it and stitched it down so it's an antique piece of trim and then put a mean and one buttons in there I don't know what it's supposed to be but it just works <laughs> but I do love it my little my Howard Howard owl so that's that one and then I finished this one which is my raccoon one and I did this, um, this is like very small fly stitches around there and then on around that going in the actual holes there is, um, what do we call that, oh see, COVID fog, oh my goodness your brain, um, chain stitch, there we go. And then I used some really nice, this is actually a tapestry wool um, that someone gave me a bag of tapestry, old tapestry wool. So the colour went really well and it's quite tactile, I quite like it. Um, but Lisa actually used this in her, one of her um, blocks and I really liked it. So I just copied what she did. And then... Um, this I think I showed this to you before it's got like I tried washing it again and I think I've washed it twice and soaked it twice overnight but um, but they're just permanently stuck in there I'm like oh well it's had a, it's had a previous life so um, I got this from a vintage um, shop in Berlin um, Chrissy's Treasures and um, I also got that from there and this said the word scones and so I unpicked the C O N left the E and there's an S so I thought I'm gonna put Sue's because Lisa Maddock um, has she usually does a block with her initial on it so um, I just thought it was too good to uh, pass up and then I stitched that on there and I thought I'm going to put woodland and then 2021 to 2022 because I used a lot of the these are all my blocks that I did block of the month so I'm going to add the 2021 as well because I've created most of these and it seems like I've whipped these up but it's because I've spent every month working on these um, I wouldn't have been able to do them in that short amount of time so a lot of the work was done already but it's so pretty and the colours are perfect, sort of the pinks and greens um, and that'll just be another block that you know I'll probably put in. I will put it all together and show you guys down the track. Um, while I'm here, I'll move this out of the way, do my show and tell. This came this morning, it just reminds me of that, you know, a few of my favourite things brown paper packages tied up with string but this is tied up with lace this is yeah whisk and wheelbarrow um win her name is she's absolutely lovely and she packages up so pretty i sort of don't i'm like don't have the heart to un undo it but um these wasn't cheap but it is genuine 1930s there was four meters of it someone obviously had bought it to you know make a dress in the day and then she she tends to find stuff and then lets me know about it um 
she's more into like selling um you know like what's called whisk and wheelbarrow like but she's really nice old stuff i've got um a little shelf thing sitting there that i got from her and um a lot of my really really nice vintage fabrics um i've got a couple of vintage packs coming up um and i think about three or four of the beautiful fabrics in there are from her um she just has a knack of you know she just goes around and shops and finds them so 1930s fabrics i might open it she always packages it really nice and then you know adds gets a little bit of extra lace i think this lace here might have been a, another package that she um wrapped up so i always use the the lace that she gets me it's so pretty and um it's just gorgeous yeah you can see vintage got a little bit of a mark here um really nice it really does look like the 1930s you know almost the feed sack style um and you can get these in and um quilt shops these days but they're not the original so um i'd like to create that because they just all work together so beautifully I initially had bought this and then she said oh um i've got these other pieces if you're interested in them as well and i'm like yes please and they're like big bits so i might even be able to see the maker or whatever is on there so there's this is four meters four meters in prestige brand new condition like it's awesome so like you'd think this was all new stuff from the quilt shop but it's not so someone's kept it in you know grandma's kept it in their basement since the 30s and 40s so i want to make um something i'm inspired by um jesse trolley um, some of the work and stuff that she does and I'd like to because I'm I'm an artist as well and so I'd like to draw some bits and pieces and sort of do a nod to the 1930s or just you know maybe an old bedside lamp and an old sewing machine and just how the little things that Jessie truly does so I thought I would get out there and I'll design it and maybe make up some packs and have like a, a wall hanging or something that's sort of an ode to um you know women that have gone before us and then all the things that they enjoyed um yeah so there you go so that's oh, i've got that today and i'm just like oh, so gorgeous so gorgeous so i'll be getting um you know lots more of this stuff when i go on my trip to france next year which will be good but you know i need things in the meantime because the trip to france is still 10 months away, 9 months, something like that. Okay, guys, well, I'll put this down. And um, I work on this baby. <sighs> so, I'll get out my bits and pieces. Where are we? What we're going to do. Um, I was thinking... Oh, hang on a minute. I'll just pause it and grab some bits and pieces. Okay, I am back. Put that in a little bit. This is the background fabric that I want to um, sew on there. I'm going to grab myself. I've got a, a bit of a, a butter menthol, so um, my throat's a bit sore. So excuse me, I normally wouldn't do this, but I've got COVID. <laughs> so my excuse okay now no um i was thinking i got this piece um when i got a lot like a big order from steph francis a while back and i was thinking i may put that around the outside of it actually i was thinking i might have that part around here i think it should fit it was, um, I'd ironed it. it. It's a piece that comes out like this. Like that. So I thought I'd, I want it to sort of stick out and go underneath. So I may have to stitch it down 
and underneath you can see it'll fit just fits so I'm a bit worried it might be a little bit too fluffy I might I could probably trim it um, this was the end of the a roll but I'll I wanted to keep that anyway because uh, a lot of the fabrics are going to be they're going to double up over each other so you probably won't see that anyway I think that works pretty hairy <laughs> but it's just something a little bit different anyway that's what I'll do in the end and I'll show you what else I got I've seen these online it's a sort of a silver plated unpicker and then they do your your name Susanna um, it's quite weighted on the bottom but I like it it handles it really well it's quite it's sharp I pricked myself when I got it <laughs> um, but it, yeah it's probably the nicest one I've ever had and I thought eh, I'm a sewer I want to get something that's personal and then if I go anywhere at least I know it's mine sorry if I'm not speaking very loud um, yeah, I apologise in advance. So put that aside. And we are going to work on um, pinning these down. Okay. So. Um, that was such a big big thing I love this guy it's so cute that look just reminds me of my cat even though like how every time I you know my cat uh, lucky love to get a good scratch underneath the chin and um, that's a look on her face it's they're just gorgeous it's amazing how um, you know I never thought I'd be we've never really had pets you know, I've been married 33 years and I think we've had we had one little puppy when our kid boys were little we only had him for about six weeks and he and he ran away from home which was a bit sad but um and we've had the odd cats every now and again but I think my cat that I've got now is probably the closest I've ever been to a, a the pet she's just gorgeous um okay so excuse me while i'm thinking oh yeah brain fog i tell you now i might sew that bit down i did have another piece there and i didn't like the color so i Put that piece there so what I might do is pin that down there and I'm gonna sew that these with the same color because I think it works so what I've been doing is just um just getting inspiration from one of my my other ones just been doing you know running stitch or just these little stitch you know a couple of cross stitches um in the pieces that i've got okay scissors okay So I hope you guys are all doing okay. Um, I mean, I've been pretty lucky. I've held off having COVID for the last two and a half years. At least the strain that's around now is not as deadly as the original. Thank goodness. Um, yeah. But it's still not very nice to have. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Hmm. Well, start it off here. So, just going to be probably just stitching. I'll do a little bit more one that way. There we go. Yeah, the colour that I had in there was sort of like this colour. And I thought, no, nah, it just doesn't. It's just not doing it for me. Now, it's been sitting there like that for months. And then this is the last one I've done in the previous videos. Um, you know, I, I showed you three of the others. And this is my last three. But in the cards that you get from... Lisa, you, um, I want to do, um, is it acorns and pine cones? And I thought, because I did a berries one and a mushroom one, um, I'll see how I go. I've got, I've got a couple of doilies, round doilies that I wouldn't mind doing some stuff on, like this one. Um, and using that as a center so um, we'll see how we go I might I've got my piece of fabric that I'm going to be laying everything on and I'll lay out everything but I'll be keeping you updated um, I'm really loving making this because it really has been a work in pro progress like um, like I said you know this was my March block in 2021 and so I haven't done all of the all of the animals there's a frog one and what else was another one that I did um, the hummingbird that one I haven't included in with it as well but So this is how you can make something that you see from somebody else. You get the inspiration and Lisa's ones are beautiful and I've been totally inspired and having doing her online course is totally invaluable. Now what I might do just go like that go down up and this one hmm. do I do similar why not? Because I'm going to do a bit of decorating on this one, I think. Yep. Thing always comes out. There we go. Oh. <laughs> the joys. <sighs> so I'm so glad that I had um, my vintage elegance um, pre-recorded that I could put up during the time like I'm starting to come out of it and feeling a lot better um, and even this one that the video that I'm done is um, this is going to go up on Saturday 
which is today is Monday so it's a, a whole week ahead and I'm sure I'll be feeling a lot better on Saturday but I thought while well, I've got a bit of energy I might as well do another video Yep. Um, yeah, I don't mind doing not too fancy stitches because I'm going to be doing some French knots and stuff on there with using these. This is like the Woodland Berries one that I got from Lisa. This is the Toadstool one, so I'm going to use the Toadstool one because it's more that colour berries. So, um, yeah, I could probably do that with you once. Oop. I've done this. Sorry that it's upside down. So, how are we all going with our uh, journal of stitcheries? I've, um, it's my previous video. No, it was Monday or today. I put out the video today of the my completed um, volume one journal of stitchery I finally got it finished and um, yeah I'm really happy with how it's looking so um, I thought while I was in the you know creating the journal mode I did the other one as well so <clears throat> yep. Okay. I'm probably going to be doing a few um, unfinished projects. between now and next year I've got I remember when I first started doing slow stitching because I saw it on either on probably on Pinterest and I did a video which is probably being my most watched video when I first started um, YouTube um, introduction to slow stitching um and in that i if you go on my playlist it's down either in sewing or in my slow stitching place um playlist and in that i show a um all these pictures that i had put onto calico um that i was going to make into a quilt years ago and i thought oh, i want to do you know slow stitching and all that kind of stuff and i wanted to make a book and um you know how long has it been probably a couple of years later and I still haven't so I'm like since then um, I've gotten a lot more information about slow stitching and all that kind of stuff and I'm probably going to um, do slow stitching just the way that we've been doing with um, the journal of stitchery around my pictures just using really pretty um, fabrics and all that kind of stuff excuse me yeah so hopefully that'll be something that I'll do 
um, and finally finish a project. And then I've got to, um, I've got to do, I've gotten all my blocks from the circle of friends. So I need to put that, that, um, quilt together. I'm not turning that into a book. I think it's definitely a quilt block. So I have to finish that so that people can see the end result of all the all the videos that have been up on that. And what else have I got? Quite a few little oh my birdhouse. Um another Lisa Meddock um quilt when I went to the retreat in Katoomba we did this birdhouse um quilt thing and I have started it and then I um, got the this but I look at this as something that I really did start before the birdhouse so that's why I wanted to do this first and then I'll go back on to doing my birdhouse blocks so yeah that should be good and i've got in the meantime i am working on a project that i want to do next year which i will pre-record stuff while i'm away because the whole month of may i am going to be first going to france with the textile tour and then after that i will be going to England to visit my brother as well as doing a few other things I thought if you're gonna go all that way you might you need to stay there for longer than just the textile tour this is a trip of a lifetime for me it's only taken me well I'm 52 last time I went was when my mum paid for me when I was on child fairs when I was 11 <laughs> so um, yeah it's, i'm just pretty excited and then um yes so i'll have stuff pre-recorded for that month ready to go before i leave i'll have it all set up i'm really got to think that far ahead when you got a channel i've been watching a lot of um corinne with her christmas journal stuff and she's um you know letting us know about all the stuff she's doing ahead of time she's currently working on an edith holden uh, project for the month of august so which i love i've actually got a couple of edith holden books um waiting to be sold i might put them on um my uh, website they're just sitting there and i've got to, i thought i've got to sell them because i've got i've probably personally got about three which i've delved in over the years one that i'm not cutting up like i thought i've got to keep one original and then i've got two um my husband works at um the salvos op shop and he managed to find some for me which is good and what I found over the years and I thought well I'm not going to be using them I might as well sell them and pass them on to someone else Edith Oldham is such a, a popular inspiration for all us journalists out there and even not journalists um Lisa's, when you, it was really inspired by the Edith Holden books. She found them years ago before they were popular with, in the journal community. So when she was living in England. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so this is like a sit and sew. So there you go. I'm actually doing a sit and sew with Sue's. How far up do I got to go? Okay. Okay. 
not too worried about it because I know it's going to be held down with all the um, embroidery that we're going to do on top of it. Oop. Try not to drag the other end over. I think that should be it. That might be underneath. Maybe. Okay. There we go. Doesn't have to be fancy. I've been loving doing these. Oh, so good. It's going to look gorgeous up on my wall. I've got a place where I'm going to, I rotate quilts every now and again. At the moment it's empty. It was, um, it's where I hung my advent calendar that I made for Christmas. Okay, here, now, stay. Normally I would stitch a little more before I went on ahead, but I want to do these. So these are oops, threads. I wonder if I should do it half. Huh? You get six strands. I might do three, three and three. So I think if you did six, it'd probably be a bit bulky. Um, this is what I did in the other berry one. Okay. I should have a look how we're going for time. This is probably one of my longest. Yeah, 32 minutes. I'll do a couple and then I'll stop. <clears throat> so, just start off here. I might grab some cream or whatever it is. Like the other one, maybe, maybe a lighter cream and do these cream bits. So, just do a bit further up. Um, a combination of colonial and blanket stitch. No, colonial and French knot. Okay. Go down. I never use the right needle to do French knots. That's why I struggle sometimes because I use the same needle for everything. I like that this is going to give it some dimension and I'm getting to use some more of this lovely thread that I've got I don't think I used these too much in the mushroom one. Okay. There we go. I might do a third. Like a bit of a big, big one. Oop. Pretty colour. And then there isn't one in between, but I'll do a small one. Just to fill up that gap. Oop. Oop. There we go. Oh, it's looking cute.
back of it. I'll show you how that looks. You can see it. Very pretty. Okay, guys. Well, I'll continue on with this. Probably going to put the word, embroider the word fox there. I was thinking I wouldn't mind even doing an, I don't know, I'm probably going to use that red in and along there, this red. When you have anything like that, I usually stitch it down on there. And I wouldn't mind even doing some French knots in the centre of these beautiful poppies. But I have to take that off and stitch that down first. So, so cute, so cute. I just love that little face. A bit like the squirrel. Okay, guys, thank you very much. I'm really sorry if I've been very quiet, which I probably have. You have to turn it up, so, um, the volume up, or um, even put in, go on your computer and put in headphones or something because you can hear it then. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.